Hello, Aya. Um, unfortunately, it seems like we're having a bit of difficulty connecting with the Skype, and I understand that you're having some internet problems at home. So for this unit, I'm going to suggest that I just go over the um, Unit 1 assessment activity with you using this video as opposed to us talking over the Skype, and that way you can move on to Unit 2 when your internet is working, okay? So for question one, you've done this correctly, and you've used both synthetic and long division, which is great. Um, the problem is when you get to the end here, um, you've got two different answers, it seems. Um, so if you take 1 minus negative 8, you get 9, because that's 1 plus 8. And you've got negative 7 here, so I think you went the wrong way. Um, and then over here, it looks like you've got a different answer again. So um, the answer really should be um, a remainder of 9 for this question. And I, you've done all the steps correctly. It's just the very last step that you had some problems with here. Okay. And then over here, you've stated the correct answer. So not sure what happened there, but that's okay. You did most of the work uh, correctly. So I want to just talk to you briefly here also about your notation. Um, when you're writing the domain and the range, then the notation, you're kind of mixing up two different types of notation here. And so what I need for you to do is actually um, use just one form of this, okay? I think, I'm not sure, I think what you've got here is for the domain that the values for x can go from minus infinity to infinity. If that's your intent for writing the domain, then that's what it should look like. And for the range, if range can be all values, if y can be all values, then again you want to go from negative infinity up to infinity. And we write the interval notation that way. The round bracket um, usually signifies that that value at the end cannot be included as one of your final um, values, one of your solutions. If you use a square bracket, it means that the number in the bracket can be included as part of your solution. We had a little bit of trouble here uh, with this question in terms of the degree. The degree is the sum of all of the exponents of x in your equation. And so in this case, your degree is 5 plus 4, which is 9. Over here, we've got 2 plus 3 plus a 1 that's not written, so that's a degree of 6. So be careful with that. Um, your roots here um, are correct. Minus 2 and 4 are your roots. But over here... Um, minus 1 is correct, 3 is correct, but also x equals 0 is correct, and you need to include that as one of your roots, okay? You're correct that, um, well, sort of correct <laughs> um, when you say that there's no y-intercept. There actually is a y-intercept. The y-intercept is the value of y that you get when you substitute x equals 0 into the equation, and so I think what you mean here is that the y-intercept is 0 as opposed to no y-intercept. We've got the same problem again with the domain and the range being written in the wrong notation. Uh, the domain of this function is going to be negative infinity up to positive infinity, written in round brackets like that. And the range of this function is going to be um, everything from positive to negative values. And so we write it like that. The domain of the second function can be anything for x, so we want negative infinity up to positive infinity. And the range of this function can also be positive or negative values, so any value will do, and so we write it like that again. Okay, for question four, um, I would like for you to show some work, first of all, to show how you found your roots. You don't actually explicitly say anywhere that these are the roots. You've just put them on the number line. I can see them here, and I know that that's what you mean, that these are the roots. But you also need to include this information in these steps in your, in your solution. 
So these answers here, these values here, 0, 3, 5, and minus 2, um, you don't explain where they come from. I know what you're doing. You're finding values um, in between minus 1 and 2, and then values from 2 to 4, and then value greater than 4, and so on. Generally what we do, instead of using this format that you've used, we use a chart format, like I've started over here for you, and you just want to determine whether or not the graph is positive or negative in those values. Once you've determined that, you go back and you look at your sign. Your sign is greater than or less than, so we're looking for positive values. And so we have positive values when x is less than minus 1. We're going to write that in this bracket here, all values from negative infinity up to minus 1. And because it can be greater than or equal to 0, we're going to use a square bracket and include minus 1 in our solution set. For the second part of it, all of the other positive values occur over here when x is greater than 2, and also I know when greater than 4, and you've tried those values too when you did the 5, and so we write that as 2 up to positive infinity, and we use a square bracket there also because 2 is one of the solutions we can include because it's greater than and equal to. For question 4b, it's the same idea. Um, you've factored this, and your three factors are um, x equals 0, x equals minus 5, and x equals 5. So I can see that you've got those values, but you haven't actually calculated them and shown me where they came from, and you need to include that step. So now that you've got them on your number line, I want you to draw a chart and test those values and see what you get. And I see that you've done it here, but you really need to do it in a chart. And you really need to do it from the order of numbers from smallest, smallest to largest. And so that's what this chart does for you, is you put in your smallest values, like minus 6, and then minus 1, and then 1, and 6, and you see what's happening there. So it looks like the times that we get positive are for all values between 0 and 5 and for any value less than minus 5. So when we write that in interval notation, we don't want to write it the, um, the way that you've got it here. We want to write it as x can be negative infinity all the way up to minus 5. And because it's only a less than and not an equals to, we're going to put a round bracket union with 0 up to 5, and again, round bracket, because it's just less than, not less than and equals. Those are the only intervals where this, oh, I'm sorry, those are the intervals where it's positive, my mistake, so that's not what we want at all. That's the opposite of what we want. We want where it's negative, which is between negative 5 and 0, so we're going to write negative 5 and 0, union 5, and positive infinity. That's the places where it's negative that we're interested in, and it has to be negative because it's below 0 or less than 0. This question was really well done. Actually, it's a little bit different than I see it done most days, but it's, um, it's, it's very good, uh, very interesting approach to that. So you have a good understanding of all of the rest of these problems, and you did a great job, and these are, are perfectly solved. Uh, so everything is, is just great here. It was just those other problems at the beginning that I want you to go over and make sure that you understand before you move on to Unit 2.